if anyone can just like take this to a beach or a pool or their backyard or, yeah. you know, and just the lose subway. themselves for a little. That's the point. Anywhere. That's the point. Themselves. Anywhere. Your closet yeah. where you're hiding from your kids. <laughs> Do it. You know, but that that would be my greatest joy to hear that that, that people were able to do that. Hey, this is Jenna Bush Hager, and this is Open Book, and I'm so happy to talk with my friend Lauren Weisberger. She has written seven novels. Is that right, or is this your eighth? This is eight. This is number eight. She has yeah. a new book out called Where the Grass is Green and the Girls Are Pretty. And Lauren, I'm so happy to talk with you about this novel. But before we get to it, I want to know what type of reader you were as a little girl. Do you remember what book first turned you on and, and what book you were like, oh, God, reading, I can't get enough of it? I, I feel like my answer might be the same as every other girl in my general age range in America, but <laughs> it had to be, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret. Oh, yes. Judy Bloom. I mean, everything Judy Bloom was formative, but that particular book will just forever, just has a special place in my heart as, I think it was like the first time I felt understood by, yeah by an author, that feeling of somebody has like crawled into your head and put words on the page that connects to what you're feeling. Other people know what I'm thinking and feeling was really eye-opening. And Judy Bloom is obviously the ultimate. I mean, all of her books did that for me, but that one in particular, I don't think I'll ever forget. I know, I'm, we're, I think we're similar in age and I got to interview Judy Bloom, and I was just like, thank you. Thank you for not making me feel like we have to be perfect, that we can just be ourselves and that is enough. And I, yes. I totally agree with you. Okay, so when you go to write a novel, this is your eighth, what's your process? How do you get into these characters? You know, I will say it, it really never gets any easier. People yeah. sometimes ask that, you know, is this something like, oh, you can just sit down and pound it out. And it's, it's nothing like that. Um, with this particular book, I've, I've wanted to write a book about sisters forever. And, you know, it's, I'm talking to the person who wrote and the ultimate book about sisters, which I absolutely loved, but, um, my sister Dina really inspired this book and our relationship. And I, it's funny, like the two characters in this one, their names were Peyton and Skye and, and they're sisters, but neither Dana nor I line up with either of these characters, but the way that we talk to each other does. And I, I imagine that you're like this with Barbara, but like there's no one else in your life who just tells it like it is. The brutal, cold, no holds barred honesty, whether you want it or not, whether you're looking for it or not, um, and I really wanted to kind of convey that in this book. And then the secrets and the scandal on the yeah. plot is sort of built around around that. To me, it feels like maybe the perfect summer read. Oh, love that. Thank you. So how have books been keeping you company throughout this last year? You know, I think in a lot of the ways that they have from the time I've been a child, I grew up in a in a small town in Pennsylvania and I had unlimited access to our local library and that was the greatest gift ever. We would go once a week and I would get to check out anything I wanted and I learned quickly it's incredibly transportive. You can travel anywhere, you can read about other cultures, about other people um, and that was a revelation as a child, but it's something I think that's been really comforting now. It's really been lovely to escape into other worlds. But I do think for me, reading is one of my f very few flow activities and, you know, to get into the flow of something great and just be yes. transported somewhere else is amazing. It's so funny, I've never heard it called a flow activity, but that's when people are like, how do you read so much? I'm like, give yourself 30 minutes to fall in love with the book. If you don't, my advice is to quit quit it. And maybe more than 30 minutes though. Maybe I give yourself a, you know, quit it. But once yeah. you're in it, if it's a great book, you're gonna be in it. You're gonna find time to read. You're gonna be reading 
you know, yeah. while you're bathing, you know, or whatever it is, you're going to find that time in the morning commute. Okay, what should we be reading besides your book, which we will pack in our bags for the summer? What else can you recommend? Something I just finished, which I don't know whether to call it a beach read or not. It was, it was very kind of dark, but also super intriguing. Um, it was a novel, it was a debut novel called The Push by Ashley oh, yeah. Did you read that? I, it was, I did, I did. It got, it got, that was one that we would, would have wanted to be a read with Jenna Pick, but it got taken by the competitor. So I, yeah. I, I do recommend yeah. it, I do recommend it. <laughs> I, I just loved it. A real sort of like mother-daughter psychological thriller. And my sister's a family therapist and it was very interesting to hear her like analysis of these characters, her take on it. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really, really, really good. I loved so, that one. Now in your new novel, there is a television show um, host. Yes as one of the characters. I wonder, can you give us a little secret of where you pulled inspiration for her? That's like, my, yes, one of my two main sisters, um, her name is Peyton Marcus, and she is the, you know, huge um, morning news show anchor. And she has worked really, 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 really hard to get to where she is. And then of course, I think there's some questioning and some reckoning about whether or not she's in the right place. But, you know, I look around at at, at so many of, of these women that we see on TV, you and your colleagues and, you know, so many others that I can see and I'm in awe of how you all do it. Like that's something that intrigues me. Well, we know The Devil Wears Prada, which is one of your books, of course, became a film which anybody that closes their eyes can remember almost all of those scenes. Um, any talks of a film or TV series with this one, or is it too early? I think it's a lit, fingers are crossed. I'm hopeful yes. that- Let's um, cross them. Yes, yes, we'll have we'll 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 good news on that. <laughs> that would be one of the best experiences ever. I would, I would love to have that again. I, I just remembered this. I mean, I'm sure I knew this before I read about uh, about you when you wrote that book, but you were actually Anna Wintour's assistant. So there was some, yeah. that was your first job, one of your first jobs. First job out of college, crazy. First job out of college, no idea how it happened. Um, ended up at her desk and I was there, you know, just under a year and it definitely informed that whole book. For sure. Yeah. It was a crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy entrance sort of into the working world of New York City. And it was wild, wild. Well, this book is so much fun. I started reading it yesterday. I think I'll probably be done with it by tonight. <laughs> you, like I tell everybody, you want to be like, okay, kids, we're going to bed early tonight. <laughs> Let's close yes. the door. Yes. Mama's got to read. Um, Lauren, congratulations. And I know so many people will be reading along with me. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much.